can share as necessary. But when you get to that summer class, if I'm correct, I believe it's the summer class, uh, we start using this book a lot. Now, uh, what's kind of encouraged me to talk about this is Nathan there was talking about that shop ready reference. Any of you have that shop reference book you get from the machinery, uh, from the machining class? <coughs> and I really hate it. I, I need to somehow write it down or remember in some way. Every draft in 111 class, I should mention this. If you look at what's required by that machining class you take, it says the shop reference book or machinery's handbook because this is really an upgrade to that book. The shop ready reference is a watered down version of this and it's worth going ahead as a mechanical engineer, it's worth going ahead spending the extra 40 bucks or whatever it is, throw it in there and get the, the, the full version here. Um, but I can tell you right now, this is the only book you will probably ever need. I mean, um, you know, there's all this talk about when you get a job, if you have the desk, all your textbooks from college, you put them up there at your desk because you're going to be using them as reference material. Well, I'll tell you what, you could replace every one of those books with this one. This right here, I'll let you read the back there about how they talk about it. Uh, a little bit blurry, but it says it's the Bible of the mechanical industry, and it really is. In fact, uh, I'm old George Berger who teaches, uh, he always would say, if there's something you need to know in a mechanical job, saying that you do get a job as a mechanical engineer, is if there's something you need to know, if it's not in this book, there's no reason you need to know it in the first place. <laughs> you know, you need to re-ask, you need to rethink your question. Because that's how, how much stuff's in here. So I mean, there's a lot of, lot of information. Right there's one we're going to be going to in, in the coming weeks in the class. There's your, your fasteners there. We're going to be talking about some of that. But uh, you don't need it for this class. But I just, you know, keep that in mind. It's a great book to have. And, uh, you know, you might want to think about purchasing that if you, if you have the money and whatnot. Like I said, I don't believe it's actually a required textbook for any of the classes here. Um, but optional, I think, on the summer class. But uh, it's a good book to have. Now, with that being said, when we left off on Wednesday, we were talking about dimension. And I think we had sat down and we had run through a couple of, uh, of pages of dimension. And there was, uh, the, I think we did this that first page. It had, uh, had a problem on the left and a problem on the right. You had to dimension it appropriately or, or in the right manner. And so we did that, that worksheet together as a class, and you saw the issues we wrestled with. It's not straightforward. There's no one-size-fits-all option. There's no procedure. There's no step-by-step -step I could write on the board. Some of you remember when we did uh, secondary auxiliaries, I literally wrote a procedure on the board, step one, step two, step three, all the way down, <coughs> because it's very logical. It's, it's a process. Dimensioning's not that way. There, there's nothing I can, I could give you maybe a tip or a trick or something, but that's about it. There's nothing I could write on the board that's a, a hard and fast procedure that works every time. You have to just, an engineer's eye has to look at every individual drawing and think of what's the best way, the best way to dimension this, you know, sheet. So keep that in mind. Um, it, it's an art, art, artistic element. It's not so much of a science as it is an art. And you saw some of the stuff we were dealing with. You know, we would get it and it's like, well, we don't really like this location. We would rather this dimension be out of the way. I don't like where it's located. Like, well, we could move it over here. Well, over here it has just the same problem. So it's just something we deal with. We just say, all right, it's good enough. You saw some of the struggles we had last time, those of you who were here. So what we're going to do today, uh, today I'm, I was going to make purely a lab day and I think that might have been my mistake because I mentioned that on Wednesday and well you could see uh, what our class looks like one two three four five six seven eight nine ten out of well sixteen in this class I believe so well, that's not too bad that's not too bad um, but you see we have some people miss that happens but of course also the kids are out of school today if I'm correct it's a school it's a teacher's work day so some uh, I don't know maybe someone has some kids or something had to deal with them. So. Or maybe they just forgot that we have classes on Monday because this is the first Monday that we've had in this class. <laughs> so far it's only been Wednesday. So. I don't know. But we're gonna, all we can do is speculate. So what we're going to do, um, uh, 
the, the four worksheets that you have to turn in for dimensioning. Today is going to be purely lab day, before and after lunch, and we're just going to work on these dimensioning sheets. If I'm correct, you have to do, uh, I think number one there, the first one we did together as a class last week was class dimensioning practice. Dimensioning practice. Um, I, I think it says class dimensioning practice worksheet N01, I think it's the way it's worded. Means practice worksheet N O for number one. I also want you to do that same thing number two. So class uh, dimensioning practice uh, worksheet N O or number two. So you're going to do one and two. You already done number one if you kept up with me last time. Yeah, number two there. You have to do it. Uh, and then there's a DIM EX1 worksheet, and then there's one more. You have the work director pulled up. I'm not mm -hmm. logged on. <laughs> what does it say? Yeah, question work. Sheet number one, okay. Yeah, and then dimensioning worksheet one. And then there's another one that says dimensioning worksheet one, and it has kind of underscores. So dimensioning underscore uh, worksheet. underscore one. So in other words, you're doing number one out of each segment there, plus number two there, class dimension of practice worksheet number two, or sheet number two. So hopefully you, you've seen the work directory there, what I'm talking about. So that's what you have to do. So you're going to work on those. Uh, let's come up in pairs. So I'm going to give you an unlimited number of free checks, just like I always do. you got to learn from your mistakes somewhere. And you might as well do it here, then turn it in, get a grade, and then learn from it once. It's better to keep getting that, you know, updating it, updating it until it looks pretty. So I'll give you an unlimited number of free checks. You'll come up here. Uh, I'll warn you once again that this class is a lot like this class is a lot like the situation if you remember from the beginning of last semester, where everybody you you know worksheet uh, multi view day. Everybody comes up with their first multi view you know, the safety key or whatever else it was. And, oh, man, I did a good job on this, and then I, I get my red pen out, and then it's, you know, you realize that you, you're not as good as you thought you were. <laughs> that will happen again probably. Just I'm not trying to discourage nobody, but just warning you when you come up here, uh, I'm you know, it, it has a tendency to you have to see your mistakes plenty of times before you start getting it right. So what we'll do is do those four worksheets. When you get the first two done, You'll print those. I'll grade. I'll not grade, but I'll give you a free check. So we'll do them in pairs. In other words, we'll do these two. I give you a free check. You go back and fix it. Free check. Go back and fix it. Free check. Eventually, when you get them right, you move on to the next two. When you get those two done, I give you free checks on them. So we'll just do them in pairs. Make things kind of easy. Um, unlimited number of free checks, and eventually, when I say, "Hey, that's good. I like it," you'll turn it in for the official grade. So is everybody good on that? All right, any questions about which worksheets you have to do? Okay. And once you get done with all of them, if you do get done, I know some of you in here are real fast and sharp with this stuff. If you find yourself getting all four done and they're turned in before the end of class, uh, come see me because I'll have another little worksheet for you to work on. Uh, we're trying to, you know, trying to keep up with the state requirements. If I start letting people uh, leave early and stuff, that's okay once in a while or if it's like within 30 minutes at the end of the class, but uh, some of you have a tendency to get done within one hour and you want to leave, you know, two hours early. You can't do that because of the state of North Carolina requirements, number of hours uh, on campus. So what we'll do is I have so, another little worksheet you can work on if you get done early. Unless it's like within the last 15 minutes of class or something, I might let you go early. But is there any questions about that? So I'm going to let my voice rest today. You guys, it's just lab time, so y'all work on all that, and I'll be around as necessary to help. What's up? It's a, um, well, I'm, I'm this one right here because we What the fuck are we doing? Oh, it's not here. Uh, oh, uh. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to pull up the first word. Okay, so the green um, was set up by block. So go ahead and hit enter. That's actually a good dimension right there. Uh, do this here. Hit the, just get here. D D I M. We just went through and. 
figured out how it is the best way to dimension the sandwich, which one you dimension it on. So like for this one, you do that one because that's where you're going to get most of your measurements because that's got hidden lines, same thing here. And then go, so you go to modify one. the end. I thought that didn't keep it. And you just got to try to find a way to do it, but you don't want to. And you see how your text colors by block? Dimension something twice or over dimension it or under dimension it. No, it don't feel it. So it's kind of like that. Now it goes lines. Feeling your way through. You said that's by block and that's by block. Okay. You said it to white. I'm, I'm not sure about the ones I did okay that and he's going to look at <laughs> to, to yeah. see, you know, because after line. looking at these and looking at mine and trying to think, well, did I do too much, did I not do enough? So I noticed that some of, uh, some of you may have noticed that when you, the last time we set up that dimension style called drafting, it didn't oh, yeah. keep it. What you might can do is open up class dimensioning practice worksheet number one where it's already set up and then see if you can... Uh, Go to save as, save it as something separate so you don't end up overriding the one you did last week, otherwise you have to redo it all. And then uh, just deleting the worksheet off and then re, that way it's already set up for you. So you pull up one where you know it's set up. I saw a hand back here. Yeah, because you changed all the Same features. Same thing? Features. <laughs> I gotta figure out how you save those. There's a way to save them. They always stay pulled up. Get open. And find last week where you did the worksheet number one. And then whatever you want to name it, we named it uh, drafting. Alright, now just to verify, hit DDIM and double check that it did save. Yes, and there, right there it is. Close that out. Now just go save as. And save it. Change that number one to a number okay. two. Continue. You know. And do the lines. Okay. And uh, change now, the your, color now when you block change to, something, uh, instead of white. changing the one you did last week, it's going to change this new one you say. Uh, change the line so what I do is just delete the whole thing. Yeah, change that to point two. Okay. Uh, Go to insert. Then change extension color to by block. block to white. And find uh, on the work directory, uh, find your uh, to dimension worksheet number two and insert it. Um, and then extend beyond dimension lines to point one two five. Just say okay there. And uh, you said that word, you click right there, you find symbols and arrows. So now there it is. But the problem is, is that Change when you insert point. something, it had to <coughs> explode. So go ahead and click the explode button. Change it to line. Yeah, hit it on that. And now it's the cursor over everything is separate. So now you still have the original worksheet. Mm -hmm. That way it works. Mm -hmm. I need to figure out there's supposed to be some place in here where you, you type in something that saves all this. Uh, never we found this. You get all that? Good. It's uh like set in Got it. Got it. Uh, how do you draft line break? Draw what? How do you draw a line break in there? Alt enter. Make sure it's quick. Okay, then change title. Um, Make that. Yeah, that actually works in any program. That's not an AutoCAD thing. That's actually any program. It's a standard Windows-based computer. So sometimes when you're in like Microsoft Excel, you ever use Excel? Okay, spreadsheet. You know, if you hit enter in Excel, it doesn't drop down to the next line. It moves down one cell. But if you want to do a line break, you have to hit Alt enter. So it works in any program. Enter, hold alt and hit enter. But you have to put your cursor where you want it to break. Yep. Okay. I might put it up on the board here. You know, we drafted, we shouldn't have to change any stuff. All right. Like we've had to do before. Oh, yeah. Well, I certainly appreciate it. It's your thing. Okay. 
you remember your line break in order to drop your leaders down to the next line is 